What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV here, back here for another update. No Spurs again this week. And uh, yeah, I'm rattling my head trying to trying to keep myself busy. Uh, no Spurs, but it is, it is hard to watch all these other teams play when Spurs aren't playing. Another game in hand this Nothing week. Nothing to disappoint you, I guess. Yeah, it's true. But... <laughs> I love the disappointment. Exactly. I love, I love the disappointment. <laughs> uh, but look, before we get into the update, I want to let you know about these new T-shirts we have got on sale. Uh, two different new designs as well as a restock of the uh, We Are Tottenham designs as well. Uh, but let me bring up this one first. Um, it's a nice Hyung Min Son T-shirt. Link is in description below. Uh, if you want to get yourself some nice Christmas presents or want to buy anyone some nice Christmas presents, uh, what better than a nice Young Min Son t-shirt? Come on, look, look at that. Beautiful. Nice one, Sonny. And if also you want to show your appreciation for the new Italian revolution at Tottenham, here's a, here's a nice t-shirt. The Italian job. There's Conte and Paratici in the Italian flag. Here's another nice t-shirt. You can also get this. What other colour you can get this in? So you've got that that one in white and black, and you've got the uh, Sonny one in navy and white as well. So so go. go. The link will be in description. Go get yours today. Exactly. There's a limited stock, so... Very limited stock, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there is stock, though. That's the uh, that's the key point. So uh, if you want to get grab yours, go to the link in description and get yours today. Um, we will be sending them out as soon as possible as well. Uh, starting to send them out from Monday. Uh, so get the get yours while you can. Uh, but let's get into a Tottenham update and let's start off with the Conference League update. Uh, we all know that the game was called off on Thursday night due to COVID cases. We all know Ren uh, tried to get the game played uh, but there has been an update as of Friday I think it was and uh, Jonathan Veal says UEFA announced that Tottenham's game with Rennes has not been, a been able to be rescheduled the matter is referred to the control ethics and disciplinary board for resolution the disciplinary panel will rule on whether Tottenham had enough fit players to meet UEFA's rules and also who could have rescheduled when hoping to conclude ruling as soon as possible uh, but if they do um, conclude that Tottenham did have enough fit players to play this game then we will be forfeiting the game in a 3-0 loss they're saying that's the most likely outcome of this time that's what the consensus is obviously we won't know until they've done a full investigation but it looks like that's going to be the outcome most likely um so it looks like our europa league conference europa conference um campaign is going to end with a whimper without even an opportunity to try and get through unfortunately look we've only got ourselves to blame because it's not just about this last game it's about how we've performed throughout the whole group stage of the conference league that's passed in this position you know losses against Vitesse, Mura, draw against Wren um ultimately those uh, results have cost us and it's put us in the position where we had to win the last game and now the position is that you know covid because uh, well, of, of the COVID outbreak, we haven't been able to fill the fixture. And now because of the losses, we're in a position where we can't even get ourselves, um, we're not going to have the opportunity to play the game. So yeah. that's just reality. And I look, to be honest, for me personally, I think of the long term, this for the, for the for specifically this season will benefit us. Um, I do think it's a bit of a shame how it's happened. I don't really like how it's how it's gone down, to be honest. It, it's uh, I don't like the fact that we've just gone out like this, but or if we do go out like this, that, that's how it's happened. But I think in the long term, with more time for Conte to be with the team on the training pitch and also more focus on the league and the domestic cup campaigns will probably benefit us in the long term for me. That's how I see it. Got to look at the positives. But I don't. I just shame how it's just ended, like being forfeited. Yeah, I could look. At the end of the day, I do agree with you. I know we've had our clashes over the Conference League um, a lot this yeah. season, but in terms of the way it's worked out, I think it is a shame. It is a shame because it is a trophy that we could could have realistically won, um, and I would have liked us to go and win it. But uh, when you look at the way it shapes up our season to play one game a week, um, you know, apart from the cup games, the Carabao and the FA Cup, which is not that many games. But when you're playing one Premier League game a week, you can properly prepare for each one. Um, it will give Conte a lot of time uh, on the training ground, like you say, to really uh, get to grips with this squad. Um, and also a lot of people are saying it's, it's an embarrassment if we win it. It's an embarrassment if we go out. Uh -huh. uh, this is probably like the least embarrassing way to go out. Yeah, because it's not really our fault. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we've gone out because of our previous results, but, you know, we could have obviously gone 
gone through if it wasn't for the COVID outbreak. And um, it is what it is. So, look, I think this will be easily quickly forgotten if um, if we turn things around in the other cups and the league campaign. So, um, despite the fact we've, it's quite embarrassing to go out the Conference League in the group stages, I just think uh, people will forget about it. People will have short memories nowadays and they'll forget about it pretty quickly if we um, start going on a good run in the league. And now we've got, you know, games in hand. Um, in, with the nine to going top four, I think that's what we got to focus on at the moment, and that's the that's what I think Conte will be looking at. Yeah, at the end of the day, there's no point focusing on the negatives now. We need to look forward. We need to focus on the positives. And the positives are that Conte is going to have more time on the training ground, get to grips and get the tactics really drilled into these players. And one game a week in the Premier League, apart from obviously these uh, um, games that have been that need to be rescheduled. But yeah. More or less, it's going to be one game a week. Oh, yeah, it? we'll see when those are rescheduled, probably in January time. We've got most likely two games, possibly three games rescheduled. So... We we'll have to wait and see about how it all uh, how it all plays out at the moment. It's gonna be it's gonna be a very busy January, but once we hit February, I think we could uh, then we'll start you know less strain on the squad and mm. stuff. All right, let's move on in some more positive news today. The Daily Mail are reporting that. Tottenham are due to reopen Hotspur Way tomorrow, uh, which is music to all our ears. And if Hotspur Way does reopen tomorrow, you would assume that the game goes ahead on Thursday. Yeah, because uh, I assume they're only reopening it if the cases are down and if there are um, people who were tested positive who are um, now negative. Uh, I, I can't think that if they're all isolating still, the, everyone who tested positive for 10 days, that the, the Hotspur Way would reopen. So I think that's positive in that view. Hopefully... Um, uh, a lot we get a lot of the players back now and they're, they're ready to go back to training and I want the game to go ahead on Thursday I don't want another rescheduled game and th that could be very very positive and also give Conte time if it were up on Monday with a view to playing the game on Thursday yeah um, look it's it's just good news that the, the training ground is supposedly opening tomorrow mm. uh, we heard on Friday that they're going to do another round of testings but they are hopeful that it will open uh, sooner rather than later and that's the update today that it could be opening tomorrow so I guess we'll report back tomorrow to seeing if it actually does open uh, but yeah. that is the report at the moment in and terms of the hotspot way yeah and obviously the athletic reported last at the end of last week the the uh leicester game is still unlikely at this point to, to not to go ahead but hopefully not, not go ahead or to go not ahead. not they said it's unlikely to go ahead sorry it's unlikely to go ahead at this point but maybe uh, hopefully things have changed on that view mm. if uh, the, the training ground's reopening. Because they were saying the training ground wouldn't reopen until like the day before yeah. Leicester game before, yeah. but now they're saying it's Monday. So hopefully things are moving in a positive direction. All right. And let's move on to some transfer news. And let's start off with the Telegraph out in Holland. And they're saying Steven Bergwijn has already made it known to Ajax that he's open to joining them. And that's on the back of uh, the Telegraph have been reporting in the past week that Ajax are very interested in taking Steven Bergwijn in January, potentially a loan move um, with an mm. option to buy. ESPN uh, have also reported on Steven Bergvine saying the relationship between Bergvine and Conte is strained. The Spurs manager is unconvinced about him. Ajax are now exploring a loan or a permanent move in January. Yeah, um, it's, um, these, it's a story that won't about go Conte away. And Bergvine as well won't go away. Not, won't, not going away. It's, when usually when there's this much noise, there's usually something going on, but um, maybe it's his agent trying to engineer a move. Him and Ajax, you know, it's, it's a move that keeps creeping up, isn't it? So at this point, I wouldn't be surprised if it's one that, um, that, gets, that gets going. I think when it goes to Bergvine, um, again, not, I don't think he's a bad player by whatsoever. I just think that... They've been waiting a while now for him to really um, get going, and it just hasn't really happened. And maybe he like, you know, it's, it doesn't mean he's a bad player. Look at Memphis Depay, you know, he came, he left the uh, Premier League, just struggled quite badly. Man United he was to, very young though when he was at United. So was Bergvine. He's twenty two, twenty three. True, true. Not, not old. Like, but uh, Depay wasn't, Bergvine, wasn't Depay a teenager? No, he wasn't United. a teenager. Yeah. He was in his early twenties okay. when he when he was at United. So I think you know, and he went went to Lyon, became a great player. Now he's at Barcelona. Like, I, I, I'm not saying Bergvine's going to have that trajectory. I'm just saying. Just because he hasn't, you know, made it at Tottenham doesn't mean he's a bad player. And I don't mm. think he's a bad player. I just think maybe he needs, um, he needs his confidence back. And maybe yeah. at the moment, Tottenham's not the right place for him. Yeah, yeah. Um, I kind of agree with that. I mean, his form has been 
um, in, in terms of the numbers that he's putting out, pretty horrific. Um, mm. Let's be honest, they have. But I've always uh, believed in Bergwijn. I really have. And I think that he's got the attributes to succeed in the Premier League. Even at Tottenham, I think he's got the attributes to succeed. But at the end of the day, if Conte doesn't fancy him, uh, he's the one that knows his onions more than anyone. So Yeah, I Conte likes specific profiles of players, to, doesn't you he? You have so. to trust in every single decision the guy makes at the end of the day. And if, if he thinks that Bergwijn um, should be out the door, then Bergwijn should be out the door at the end of the day. Just as long as we get someone in, that's the main thing. Yeah, uh, that's obvious. Yeah, I mean, because if we don't bring someone in and one of our front three get injured, I mean, yeah, we're really so screwed. We're really screwed, aren't we? So screwed. So, uh, yeah, that's the Steven Bergwijn situation. Uh, Calcio and Mercato have brought up a few rumours as well. The first one is Antonio Conte has identified Danish defender Andreas Christensen as the ideal profile to strengthen his defence. The assault is ready to start. A real threat to Juventus and Milan, who had also put their eyes on the centre-back, which is a very interesting one. Uh, we're linked with both the Chelsea centre-backs, yeah. Rudiger and Christensen, both of them contracts ending at the end of the season. Uh, what's going on over there, Simon? Well, with Rudiger, um, you know, he's one, he apparently he wants to be one of the highest paid players at the club and apparently they're set to offer him over 300 grand a week at this point. So, I mean, if that's what he's demanding, there's no way Tottenham are. I think the Tottenham links are probably just to drive up the price. I don't think he's, if he's demanding that figure, you think he's going to come to Tottenham? I yeah. don't think so. So, in terms of Christensen, it might be a bit different. Because I know Chelsea are getting a bit sick of um, uh, their apparently they've ag agreed deals with uh, Christensen and then the agent of Christensen has reneged them a couple of times and they're starting to get a bit um, uh, sick of their agent. So apparently the the um, contract talks are on the verge of breaking down, which um, could open, you know, with his contract running out in six months, it could open the door. Obviously, we got Hoybier at Tottenham. Um, Ericsson obviously used to play for us, so he, um, he'll be a bit of a, uh, he'll know, he can speak to his fellow Danes and talk about life for Tottenham and um, I'm a big fan of Christensen I think he's a very very good defender one who's very comfortable on the ball mm, one very, yeah, yeah he's really good uh, could be really good for Conte obviously he uh, Conte played with him at Chelsea I um, mean actually had was actually really he actually broke into the team and was really good under Conte uh, when he was there so um, I think it's definitely one I'll be you know he's young as well 22 23 maybe um, so He's uh, and he's got a lot of scope to grow. Um, so I think he's got a lot of potential. We haven't seen the best of him yet in the Premier League. So I'll be very interested in getting Christensen through the door if uh, if he was willing to come and we can get a deal done. The only thing is, um, I worry about whether we could even because he'll be a free agent, whether the money would work because he's probably on nearly a hundred. Must be nearly a hundred grand a week at Chelsea. And I'm assuming the deal is he wants like more like a lot more so whether we can get a deal done I have remains to be seen but definitely I think Conte would be very interested in this one yeah the only thing that strikes alarm bells with me is um, the agent uh, stuff with Chelsea and you mm. know keeps with the back and forth and all that kind of stuff I mean how's that going to rub with Levy and stuff like that yeah if, if, you know if, if Levy's I mean? doing like, that if he's kind not of getting stuff, on yeah. with Roman Abramovich how are they going to get on with Levy mm. good question yeah I don't know I don't know but maybe it's one that could work I don't know I've got no idea what exactly the problems are all I know is that um Apparently, I've, I've, I've heard that uh, they've agreed deals with Christensen and then the agents have come back and started demanding more stuff mm. on top of that. So that's what Levy likes to do anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe Levy will appreciate it. <laughs> uh, but I do know, uh, you know, he's very highly rated within the Chelsea fan base. I think that they'll be very upset to lose him. And if we can get him through the door in some sort of fashion, I, I, I just think want, I just want, to, want it to happen just to see Lewis's face. If it ever <laughs> happens, oh my God. <laughs> if that <laughs> happens, I'm going to start the AC penitentiary. Oh my God. If that, I just want to see a lot viewing of his face when the transfer goes through. Not only have we got Christensen, but Conte <laughs> as the manager as well. <laughs> oh, that'll be amazing. All right, and the last one again from Calcio Mercato is Tottenham Hotspur have rejoined the race to sign Fiorentina centre-back Nikola Milenkovic and are eyeing a move for him in January. Yeah, I mean, we, could, we should have done this when he had his year left on his contract before he signed a new one in the summer. I mean, it would have been cheaper, but... Um, again, another another player who's, uh, and again, apparently he's having another good season at Fiorentina. So, I mean, but it's going to be very, very expensive. If we, if we weren't certain about him when he was worth, what, 15 million or something, right? Or 20 million. No, but I heard that he still got um, a release clause around that figure in his contract. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. So maybe it's one that could get done then. Yeah. Maybe, I mean, I, I, I can't see us signing him and Christensen because I think they're quite similar in, in their profile. They're very tall, but I don't think you want both, like two of those kind of players in the team kind of thing um because they're, they're both kind of like very very lanky but they're uh, like aerial presence but like they're both not the quickest although christensen's no slouch but he's not 
like the quicker centre back. So would you want him and Milenkovic? I don't know, but definitely um, it's one of those things where like one of those two for sure I can see happening. Well, the Gazeta della Sport were reporting on the 3rd of December uh, that he's got a 15 million euro release clause. So cheap. That's nuts. I mean, but at that price, you've got to think like, if you're not certain about him at that price, how good can he be? You know what yeah. I mean? It's so cheap. Like, how can you not, if he's that good and, that, and you're that convinced by him, that's, a, that's like, you don't even think about that kind of money. Yeah. You know what I mean? So surely it must be something they're not sure about. Yeah. Um, also, that report uh, that I was telling you about saying that Milan are very interested in him uh, in January as well. Um, mm. So look, because I think Simon uh, Kier got a big injury um, a few weeks ago. So they're looking for a centre back desperately. Um, but look, that is the uh, Tottenham update for today. Uh, let me know in the comment section below if you have any thoughts regarding any of the news stories we brought to you today. T-shirts, link is in the description below. We've got the Sony T-shirts, we've got the Italian Job T-shirts, and we've got the We Are Tottenham T-shirts as well. And also, I want to give a quick message to Bob Spur TV, who is currently, uh, really, he is not doing uh, very well at the moment, in hospital still. Uh, so I just want everyone to keep sending them the best wishes. On the last Tottenham update, the comments were dominated for best wishes to Bob and let's make mm. that happen again because we just need him to get better we need him better um, need all the good vibes in Bob's way exactly. 100% right now exactly so um, we wish you better Bob we love you very much and can't wait uh, to see you again uh, but we'll uh, leave it there that is your Tottenham update let me know in the comment section below any thoughts like subscribe and comment and as always come, come on, on you Spurs, Spurs.